dashboard. I just want to, I didn't do this in the last one, so I'll have to put up a, a, a frame, but you know, just want to do this for the video's sake. Um, Second, everyone. Share screen. Just do this for. Get that out of the way. 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 Get this. Everybody, welcome. Uh, convert that last one to the. Triple Lambos group, quick disclaimer. So that everybody knows that this is not investing advice. We're just having an open discussion. So uh, having said that, I will stop my share and we will make the Kubu the host. All right. So uh, we were in the middle of talking about the strike prices and um, in the money, out of the money. So I'll go ahead and hide this and back to it. Yak, are you, uh, are you muted? I'm muted, yeah. I'm there you go. Now. Okay, yeah, so, continue. So we were talking about Tesla. We were looking at the um, options panel in TradingView. We're looking at um, calls and puts and right around the strike price. And we were talking about how um, implied volatility, um, that number, um, it, it determines who's a buyer's or a seller's market. So you were in the middle of making a point, and I'm just going to ask one more time, is at what point does it show, does the implied volatility show it's a seller's market versus a buyer's market? Is it All a 50% right, so mark or above 50 or little bit. Okay. I'm about to go down here a little bit. You could see, look at this implied volatility down here. It's in the 90s, 70 inch and stuff like that. Uh, and from now to one month, do you expect Tesla to jump from one, um, from 70, 781? to maybe thirteen hundred dollars do you expect that to happen no so exactly. the implied volatility is huge and so I, I just again for me this is really just basic understanding and for a lot of the beginners yeah. like I, you know when you say implied volatility it's like what the heck does that mean okay yeah, that's that, what i'm giving you the simple do, do i really think that it's going to go from 781 dollars to 1300 dollars yeah probably so, not so it's exactly. a high percentage of the volatility. So you're looking yeah. for a low, a lower number, 50, exactly. 50 percent Exactly, because, over. and you just have a month, even though Tesla just sometimes it could make some crazy movements, but that one, remember, you, you, meaning you're just speculating, you just, you're just playing your luck, and you, you can never tell. You understand, sure. even though, look, we have huge open interest and stuff like that, but you see the implied volatility is like 73% and yeah, stuff, like, and it's very cheap. But remember, so, so, this cheap, you could lose it. Or most of the people here, they're trying to just swing. They're trying to just double this 132. They, they could buy like huge contracts on it. Let's say 200 contract, 500 contract. And believe me, if this double to $2, mm -hmm. that's huge amount for them. Because they're right. putting, yeah. Because so, there are some people who play these kind of things. But remember, you could be wiped out like easily. And the other thing is that is that um, you know options work on time. So today it's ninety five hundred six people in that implied interest group, but tomorrow it might be a whole lot less if a bunch of people sold off, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it could be. So okay. it could reduce. It could go up. So that too is being said. And so and if that number if that number changes drastically from a lot of people interested to a, not a lot of people interested, that shows you that you know interest is dropping off and that. You know, there's probably 
that volatility, that implied volatility is going to be even higher. And, and remember, this interest is for two, 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 two people on both sides. There are some mm -hmm. people selling the options and there are some people buying the options. So it's good. So be there are 9,500 pairs of people that are out there talking. You don't know, you don't know who is, okay, you know, I, I wanted to read this. I wanted to post this last time. Let me, let me just read it here and let you guys see if I still do have it. Yeah, if you pull it up on your screen, if you can. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so for anybody who took the bait and bought doggy coin, uh, you're not having a good day right now. I just checked it because I saw something come across some stock rips. While Yukubu is pulling up this thing, um, I want to go back to... Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know where actually I placed it, but it's fine. Um, okay. Next, I, I, I if, see. If you want to paraphrase, if you want to paraphrase what you read. Yeah. Okay. So what I what actually I I said was um this investing is like um what's the name is it's like uh, it's like um a poker it's like a poker player. You understand? Everybody want to see the um what's the name his opponent card. Right. You understand? So being able to see your opponent's card could open the person lose. So your opponent doesn't want to doesn't want to see your card. You don't want your opponent to see your your card either. So everybody is just in it. So like over here when we're talking about this open interest, it's like two. There are two people in one open interest. You don't know who who, who which card anybody has. So don't don't let this was the name. Don't let this um trick you in a way. Open like, interest. Oh, there's so many people here. I can just buy this $1,200, $1,200 right. call option on, on Tesla expiring in 30 days, unless maybe a miracle happens and then this could just flip up. You never right. continue. You understand? Right, like, so yeah, like don't let Elon this always come. Don't let this um, trick you saying that, oh, look at the number of people here. I could just buy this and you know you could lose everything. But you could also make some money. You, you could just double it. This could shoot up to maybe $2. And yeah, it could shoot up to $3 real quick. Yeah, you can never tell because it's very, very volatile. Its volatility is high. So um, that's what you, it is. Could you, could you pull up a browser and pull up the Robinhood's option panel? Sure. Um, I know Robinhood is persona non grata, but they have an actual nice presentation on their options panel that showed that implied volatility and stuff that we looked at before. And I just want to um, kind of look at those columns and compare them to the think or swim columns. So, um, you know, as people are getting away from Robin hood, we know the right places to look. Right. So do you have a browser you can pull up? Hmm. Maybe go to the Tesla options in Robin Hood. And then present that on your screen. Mm -hmm. Because when we did our talk a few weeks ago, um, you had pulled up the Robin Hood option panel and those implied volume and things like that were just in nice little columns. And I just, again, want to kind of compare. Yeah. Is this, this is good, right? Uh, I can't see Robin Hood right now. Like, oh, you can't see? No, you're just sharing your Thrinkorswim right now. 
That's why I keep asking you to share it because I'm not seeing any changes to your screen. There what we about go. Now? Yeah, okay. now now I can see it. So okay. so if you go to um we're gonna switch between Robin Hood and uh and think is from but the, in this panel here go to the top because that's where it shows all of that implied volatility and stuff right yeah um yeah if you want to see the implied volatility you just have to click on it you that's click it click on it that's it and then this okay, is the implied so, volatility so the things that we looked for um when we looked at this a couple of weeks ago were the volume the yeah. open interest and the implied volatility and the delta mm -hmm. correct yeah. Okay, now let's go back to thinkorswim and we'll identify those in the columns volume open interest implied volatility delta. And we added a few of those during our discussion in the last half hour. Uh, yeah. You can see my so, tinker swim right. Mm hmm. Okay, so yeah so that's technically what it is over here. Okay, so, so open interest is the second column volume is the first. Um, and delta, then implied volatility. Yeah, so those are all the columns that we're really looking for back over there. And exactly. um, so implied, volat implied volatility, we're looking for low numbers. Um, open interest, we're looking for high numbers, but we don't want to be too far out of the money on the strike price. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, we're looking for high volume, correct? Mm -hmm. And so high volume, high open interest, uh, decent delta and then the low implied volatility. Great. Um, yeah. those, those are the things we look for. So again, let's go back to like strike price and ask price and just like, you know, how far out of the money do you generally, I mean, you know, then this is going to be different for everybody based on how much yeah. you have in your account, but we'll talk percentages. Let's say like what kind of you, you go in 3%, 10%, of your yeah like your... um the the most high i go is like maybe 15 percent out of the money okay 15 can you out of... can you scroll up to where the um puts and calls meet the, the price there we go yeah so yes. right now so this right light straight now around this price mark 780 so it i told you the shades like the deep column shows you what is in the money and then mm -hmm. the the the, the non-deep column shows you what is out of the money and it's both sides. See here, that's in the money. And then here is out of the money. So it's on both so sides. In the money would be safe bets, correct? Yeah. Let's talk about those for a minute. Like how often do you do those? Or are, you, or are those just ones that you were like, okay, um, you know, I can set it and forget it. What's like that? Just, that means like I can just buy the option and then when it expires in a month, I know it's going to go up and I just, I don't even have to look at it. Yeah, so like those ones like that, you want to give yourself time. You want to go anywhere between 45 to maybe 60 days or maybe I could buy maybe let's say um, like the plants here. I have one April call. So let's say this April, I have 55 days, um, which is good. Mm -hmm. So this 55 days, um, the way Tesla is trading right now. Okay, you remember Tesla what you're... I'm gonna go to plant here, okay? Because Tesla is very expensive. Not everybody is able to, you know, gas rate. Or the sure. So with this one, this um um plant here, I could I could just go right here. Like I have four thousand people interested, two thousand, almost three thousand people, three thousand volume, four thousand open interest. This is good for me. And then um, the delta is 0. 0.74. Like, so every fluctuating, I make 40, $74. So every, that's $74. So and $25, like this, $25 yeah. strike price is only 25 cents away above exactly. the house price. So and it's very likely this that like it will this, get there. I could just purchase it right now and just leave it. I don't care. Unless maybe there's a huge repose in the market or something like that. But mm -hmm. other than that, I don't have to bother myself. So to, that's an know. in the money. That's an in the money bet. So you, you can pretty much, you know, count on that one going in your favor because yeah. it, it's a very safe bet. And and, and you also have is, time. Remember, um, yeah. and Mike, I saw that most of the time you buy weekly options, and when it tends to expire, um, worthless. Not all the time you need to buy these weekly options. It depends when you have full conviction. Let's say 
um this stock is beating down okay there's a stock last time i posted eh so mm. if we all could testify right eh this is eh eh mm -hmm. it's it low it's it it one day all of a sudden the stock went down sixty eight dollars Oh, so well, this yeah. is it lose seven dollars and the stock was up 129. This is the wow. high. And then on oh, just one day, I'm gonna close the stock. So look at where the stock is trading at. You understand? Right. So pre-market it was starting to go down and then just all day it just so dropped, dropped, dropped. One day the stock went all the way here, all the way to this price. Let mm. me let me close, let me take out the um um, what's the name? Studies, yeah. Yeah. So okay. you see this like this. I and guess what? That hopefully I was able to short this stock too. Um, I was able to short it around seventy four dollars. So as soon as it started going down, you sold because you're like, oh shit, there goes all my money. No, 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 no. I w I didn't have any position in this stock. Oh, I, oh, I see. You I noticed have, the drop. Yeah, because there was an article about um, fraud, about a, about a fraud with this company. Mm. That'll yeah. definitely so, make your stock go down. Exactly. So when I heard about it, I shorted the stock. I um, have, um, what's the name? Let me open my other, what's the name? Uh, my, I open uh, my shots, um, put, uh, what's the name? Platform, which is trade zero. So oh, that's okay. yeah. So that one is just on um, my shorts. Was the name um my shorts? Your um, short plays. Yeah, uh, account. I only short with that. You understand? Oh, I see. It's a it's a shorting account. Yeah, I only short with that. And folks, don't think like shorting is bad. Shorting too is good sometimes. I know with um with the what's the name um. With um with the game stock stuff, many people think, oh, if our oh, short sellers are bad, no, short sellers are not that bad like that. You understand? They're just a different type of seller. Yeah, it's, a it's, type just, of it's just a market, and in the market, everybody has a different what's the name mindset and a different ball game. And that, that goes back to the type of trader you are. Are you a day trader? Are you a scalper? Are you a a, a short seller? Are you a um a long holder? You know, yeah. it, 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 there's nothing bad about it. It's just a different style. And right Absolutely. now, uh, the short seller style just happens to be getting a lot of bad press. Yeah. So don't don't think like what was the name? Somebody is a is is a short seller. The person is is bad evil. or no no no. So they're not evil. So technically, <laughs> I was people saying, are just I, doing what we're doing. They're trying to make money. Yeah. So I saw I saw it around seventy four dollars, and and then I was able to locate the stock. I located just you know a handful mm, and then the stock went resistance. down all the way all the way to um forty three dollars so around this price um so be, meaning that if you shorten the stock you borrowing the stock right so mm -hmm. you borrowing you borrow the stock so when I, I borrowed the stock it's just like you lend me your car right maybe your car costs twenty five thousand dollars and then you mm -hmm. lend me the car so when you lend me the car the car is in my possession. So now I went to the auction or I went to the car dealer and I asked the car dealer, hey, um, how much do you think this car worth? The dealer will be like, you know what? Um, I could give you maybe 20, 23,000 for this. Mm -hmm. You understand? So you just sold your friend's car for $23,000. And then you went to another dealer and then the dealer said, oh, you know what? I could sell you this car for $20. Just an illustration, you understand? So mm -hmm. the different, the, how you be able to is the, the profit between the other dealer paying you twenty three thousand, and then the other dealer buying the car for twenty 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 thousand, and who will tell you? Maybe let's say your friend gave you the car, you destroy the car, or anything happen. Let's say let's just say a laptop or something, and mm -hmm. then maybe your friend told you, you know what? Um, I bought this laptop on sale at Best Buy for maybe um eight hundred dollars so the person gave you the laptop you spoiled it so now um i called you now you have Mike. to replace it mm -hmm. exactly so now you go to best buy remember they're not on sale now so technical you will have to buy the full price maybe the full price is 1500 now guess what who lost you lost 
at the end of the day, your friend lent it to you. Now you have to give it back. So it's just the same thing. So I was able to shut the stock around um, 40, 40, 40, uh, 47 something. And then the stock went down and kept going down around $43. I felt and so comfortable. When it started, I feel like, so when it started coming back up, you knew that your shorting was over. It was yeah. time to, to, to get rid of your short. Exactly. And, like for me, and, I didn't even wait. I didn't even see the sign of coming down. I just saw that this is going way down. Like, because you could see that it way, it went all the way to $38. Well, and then you the can way the stock was moving. Yeah. That red, but I, that I, red I covered waterfall. my position because you, you don't want it to go way down because sometimes you don't know what is going to happen. Maybe I could have waited and further, when it was yeah. coming up here and then I could still cover, which is fine. But I told myself this is enough. And in short, and what I've understood is you need to have a you need to have a game plan. You just don't go short a stock without knowing your exit points. You understand? Right. And this but goes what... to any any trading you want to do. If you're going in, you need to tell yourself, just give yourself a price and give yourself what price you want to get out. And in case it happens, don't be greedy. Don't tell yourself you could make more. You already told yourself this is what you want. Even though you left many money, so much money on the table, it's fine. But yeah, your your the, theory was right, and and you should be satisfied with your exactly. theory being right. Uh huh. It, it and, made and the it's price all about, that you thought it would. Exactly, and 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 it's not about what you left or what. Being able to be right on your theory is a big thing. Like being able that's to successful be right. trading. Exactly. Like that happened to me on um N N C N C um A N C N A N C N. Yeah, literally exactly. at a point in time I felt like I moved the stock. I, I, I felt like this stock was in my ball game. Like I I bought the stock. The stock was um was the name. It was like around four dollars or something. I bought like mm. around three something, three eighty. I went into the stock at three eighty. But the stock, the stock kept going. If you could, you guys could even testify. I posted in the group. The stock went yeah. all the way. Yeah, yeah. It was going, it was going. And I knew, all of a sudden, I knew this is going to touch $10. All of a sudden. So I placed my sell limit to $10. It hit $10 like just within within a fraction of a second. And it came right back again. So I, I placed my sell limit. It hit the $10. And then yeah. when it was coming right down back again around um, um 970 around 970, it was consolidating around that price. And then I also ended up shorting it back again. I shorted it from 9, 970 all the way to almost, um, what's the name, $5. And then around $5, I ended up buying the stock again. The stock went up again to about $8. And then it's like the stock was just moving. And then at, at a point in time, I felt like I'm I'm in control. It's like, I, yeah. I just, at that point, you know, you know the movements and, and exactly. you your plays so based on what you know. So back and forth, like, and, and I, I could just, I, I, I told myself, this is one of my best trade ever. I've never had this kind of um, 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 level of, um, what's the name, influence on, on myself and being able to understand how this is going to move and just predict and be right from the top of, of it, from, like, the, uh, from the button and then from the, what's the name? Think of it like a surfer who's found a wave and the, the wave is just curled around him and you know what the top is and you know what the bottom is. And the, the surfer just basically goes from the top to the bottom. And so, you know, when you, what I see um, just to replay here is that in that dark area where the red just starts dropping, 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 yeah. you, you caught, you caught notice that it's dropping. So you know that that wave is going to go down. So you yeah. started to short. You you got in at that that red line there, uh, just above where your mouse is, um, and you started to see it go down over in that in that waterfall. And you took advantage of that waterfall. And so as it fell, um, and went all the way down to what forty, that lower red line. Um, that's when you realized it was starting to go back up. It's not going to fall anymore. It's time to stop that um, short sell and start looking at where it's going to go. Right. So. Yeah. And then what you found was that channel between what looks like 75 and 6270. And it just kind of goes back and forth between there for a while. And what I'm saying is that that back and forth where it's, you know, you can, you can play each of those up green swing, red down swing, you know, um, that's kind of like riding up and down. That's where you would want to do, in my opinion, like automated trading where, you know, you could have alerts that would trigger buys and sells. But um, more to the point of 
when you got to the point where you stopped and you got rid of your short sell, what made you decide to get an option? And what was it that level that it resistance that it found there and that support level? Like what, what was your decision making oh, at that point? So technical on that, that stock actually, I'm not, it doesn't, um, this is not an option. This is purely stocks. No, so, I know. I, but, but you said that you had shorted that stock at that yeah, red waterfall, but then exactly. when it came back up, that's when you decided that you should maybe look at options, correct? Did no, 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 right? no, no, no. Um, oh, okay. The stock, I'm not sure it's even, let me see. I'm not sure it has options on it. I'm not sure it does have mm. options. No, because this no. is a penny stock. This is, this is not, this is, this stock Over doesn't the even have options. So it was basically just, um, playing the stock, Momentum. buying it, and then um, was then in borrowing it. Like you could just borrow the stock, not necessarily using options. You could just borrow the stock, just like regular borrowing. Um, oh, just like, like using, your margin, using your margin. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I just borrowed the stock around, um, um, was then in 970. And then um, when the stock came down back to, was then in um, um, 520 or five something, um, mm -hmm. I, decided that it's time for me to buy the stock and give it to the um, broker and give it back what I what I borrowed. That's it. Right. Yeah. So that right. was what happened. And so for the new folks out there, um, margin and leverage is very important. And the more margin and leverage you have with your broker, the more risky you can get on the short sales. Um, but at the same time, you know, short sales means that you have to be able to cover that money in the end of your account, at the end of the day in your account. Just, you know, the risk is there and, you know, it comes, if you, obviously if you haven't closed something, um, you, you're not gonna have to call the margin, but um, the whole point of short selling is you're borrowing from the broker a certain amount of share. You're borrowing money basically to buy the shares from the broker. And at the point where you sell the shares, you have to give that money back to the broker and you keep the profit difference. Yeah. So basically, just, that just was for it. just for some education for some of the um, newer folks who aren't who, who aren't accustomed to, you were saying earlier about how short sellers are getting a bad name, um, yeah. and I just want to make sure that people understand what short sellers do. And short sellers take a lot of risk. They have to have a lot of money in their account to be able to cover if their bet doesn't pan out. Like if they bought. Uh, like in uh, the case here where that high of 5.9 is, if they sold the stock and used the broker's money to do it, like Yakubu did, and then waited for it to get down to 4.2 at the end of that red run in the middle, um, when he sells it, you know, um, that's when the prices change and all he has to do is give the broker back the money they loaned him. And the difference is that is the, the delta between the, the top and the bottom. And because he sold it, he took everybody who bought that stock, he took the money that they gave him for it as he sold it to them on those different prices. So it, it's a little bit convoluted explanation, but um, just so you understand what short selling is, um, again, more of an educational talk here. So um, we've covered options. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, we've got 10 minutes left on this presentation. So I wanna, um, first of all, thank you for again, explaining the options. I understand them a whole lot better and I'm gonna be much better prepared uh, this week to, um, to do some options. Cause you know, I'm feeling like I'm confident I'm getting like 75% wins on my yeah. trades. And so mm -hmm. now's the time when I want to, um, when I want to uh, be able to do options like this because that's when the, the growth is really gonna happen for my account. Um, yeah. I'm going to, if you wanna go ahead and let me see if I can take over more. How do I make myself the host? Reclaim host, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna share. Uh, go back to desktop. Uh, we'll go just really quickly. 
<laughs> so for everybody who's joined in and we started off uh, just kind of jumped right in with Jukubu and I and we recorded the last session. <clears throat> I'll put the uh, recordings up as I usually do at the end of the thing. Um, there'll be a link to the PDF for this particular presentation. Um, just a couple of things we want to cover. Again, the disclaimer. Uh, we were talking about um, different type of trading styles and type of investors that there are out there. And, you know, you can label them this. I thought this was kind of a clever way to, you know, link them to animals and whatnot. But um, <clears throat> let's see, we've done introductions. Um, I guess for the next 10 minutes, we can just talk about if anybody wants to unmute and, and speak up, you can um, talk about how your week went. Um, QS went really well for me. Um, AMC did not. Uh, RMO has been kind of a mixed bag. It had a really couple of bad days and then had a good day. Um, yeah, um, I just wanted to, um, what's the name? Um, tell Miriam something real quick. Um, I saw when we were playing the SNDL. Um, hello? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so Miriam, are you there? Try to unmute and give us a yes. Who is it? Miriam, Miriam. Miriam, are you here? Yeah. I don't, I'm not seeing her. Let me see. Let me see her here, but I don't know. Let me look at the participants window. Zoom. Back to meeting. Hmm. Participants. You're just not there, I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah but I'm just going to say it real quick. Um, So when we're playing the SNDL, we, what's the name? We were all in it together. We were able to predict. We said we're going to go in and we're going to wait and get the profit. And if you remember, we got in to read around 60 cents. You know, some got in to read 70, 80 cents, which was very great. But I knew that anything less than $2 was a steal. Like I knew right out of the get-go. And I, I placed my sell limit at $3. Like most of my, what's the name, my S&D or my sell limit was $3 because I bought it at 60 cents and selling it at $3, I think it was fair. But many people made over 1,000% and ended up still not knowing that, look, this is trading and trading, there's so many things to go in. And this is a penny stock and we, we shouldn't be attached to whatever we trade in, whatever security we trade in. We want to go in and make money and get out. That's the main goal. But right. many and folks decided to, what's the name, stay in and stay in is fine. If let's say you bought 1,000 shares, don't get too attached because guess what? We're trading. You got in, you have 1,000, you could sell 700. And maybe if you think there's gonna be some movement the 300 could give you whatever you want to get. You double, triple, quadruple your money. You don't need to be too attached to it. Allow it. Like, it's going to come back again. There are other different places. So that's why um, what the type of investing you want to do matters. If you want to be a swing trader and if you want to be um, was then a day trader you want so you need to know what you want to do you want to scalp you want to so yeah because some of the time the stock we post in the group is just to be able to you know um you know swing it real quick or sometimes it takes a couple of days sometimes within one day we, we could have one thousand percent so you need to be able to understand what to be going on even though somebody gives you the tip you need to you know play events because you're not playing defense, you could be wiped out in a second. So it's more about we preserving our capital than what's the name. Because the ANCN, the ANCN, I remembered when I posted it, the stock was around 380. We started buying, it. no, ANCN, ANCN. ANCN? Yeah, N, N, C, N. Yeah. ANN as nano, 
A N C N. Yeah. So I remember the A N C N when I posted it around 380. I started, you know, giving the momentum. Okay, let's go. And I was commenting on it. And we, we started buying, and some people were up like, you know, five, eight dollars. You know, you need to start locking profit. You bought something around eight, 380. The stock went all the way to $5, $8. Right. Come on, you need to start locking profit. It doesn't matter whether you were executed at five, six dollars, you're making money. You need to lock that profit. But many folks left it, the thing went all the way and it went all the way to $10. Some people maybe jumped in around $5, but it went up eight, nine dollars. You need to put your stop loss because you can't yeah. tell. And the stock halted. The moment the stock halted, it came right back and I saw some people were like, oh, what the fuck, what happened? You know, yeah. that's, that's what it is. You need to be very, very aggressive with it. For me, I was able to see that this is gonna happen, but I didn't even know when it's gonna break. But I started putting my stop loss. I placed in my sell limit. I knew this is gonna touch $10 real quick. I placed it, it touched $10 real quick. And around, I started consolidating. It's, it's, it's kept so long around nine, 970, it was trying to figure out, and then it's halted and it came right back down. And that was when I, you know, positioned myself and, and borrowed the stock. Then I was filled for 970, 965. And then it went down all the way to like five something. And that was when I started COVID. And then the stock moved like three times in that day. It was going up, down, up, down, like, like that. It was very, very volatile. So, yeah, so I just wanted to clear that in the way. QS was a great example of that, right? So um, QS, it had a lot of hype and it was way up. And like, that's, I think it was back in December, I had heard about it. And I think it was Yukubu, and you had seen some, some strong movement. And I had gotten in like, I forget where it was. It was like late December and I watched it go up and then I just watched it plummet. And it was sitting at this level for the last two and a half months and I'm sitting there and especially like on days like this when it would drop down you know four or five percent I'm just like oh my god is this stock ever going to go this week it just went bam and it didn't come back all that much right it only came up to about the same resistance level as we had back over here right we've got a support level down there a resistance level here and then that's all it made it back up so this jump right here was an anomaly right where it got a bunch of hype but these resistance lines are solid so you know when i bought it it was down it was in this area right here and then i just sat and watched it lose for a month and a half and it was so depressing and then all of a sudden this week it just came back up and it was in this last once it came back up and it started to go green again you know, so it's down in this pit, it's down in this pit. And once it hit green again, that's when I set a stop loss. And I unfortunately changed it and you know, I'm not gonna get into the details of it. But what happened is, it's like, I'm already in the green. So right there, I know that, you know, I can set a limit up here, $75, but at the same time, I can set a trailing